Hi, Joe Cerrone. And Al Rosen. Welcome to CAD 116, Basic AutoCAD with our weekly Zoom meeting. We can take a look at the front splash page. Uh, that is our Zoom meeting uh, uh, information that we sent out. Right below it is the class information uh, has been color coded uh, to, for you for below. Blue is books, green is lab work, uh, magenta is videos, and red is either quizzes, tests, or something in that area. That's right. So we're trying to make it easy to, to navigate through the course. We have a, a video for the assignment for module two. Module two covers introduction to drawing and editing in basic object commands. So as we take a look at the commands, just look for the big words or the, uh, the bold text. And those are the commands. And they've actually got them as the actual commands. So if you type in erase or undo or circle or arc, it's a good shortcut rather than to have to find the icons. And so AutoCAD still uses the keyboard and allows you to type in the commands. So here's an example of some of the assignments from this week. We'll be going through coordinate entry with this number one. And then we'll look at a mechanical design project and an architectural design project. And that's typical of how we'll run the course. Every week we'll run a general design project like this number one, which will go through things like coordinate entry. How do you input coordinates? And then we'll go through and give you your choice or we'll make you do both of them of a mechanical exercise or an architectural exercise. So the labs are right here. If we look at the ARC lab, there it is. And it's a floor plan for a conference room with the table and chairs. The chairs are located in the D2L, I believe. Under content, And then module two, or chapter two. And so here's our chapter two information. And here's the chair that you can use for this exercise. You just download it and you can open it. Oh, it's a 3D chair, Al. Yeah, it's one of mine. Yeah. So as we go through and we, we work on these projects, if I were to take a top view of this, now it looks 2D. And then if I went into one of my exercises, like this one, for the chair, what you can do is you can copy it with a base point. And we prefer you put them in at a 12 o'clock or a three o'clock position on these because it's a polar array, and with a polar array, we want the chairs to be set from a specific angle. And so if I was to insert that chair, what I would do is I would say edit, copy with base point. And if you don't have the pull down menus, you can get those right here by hitting this little gizmo here. It's a little arrow with a line over it, and you show the menu bar. Edit, copy with base point select the object or select the base point. So I'll just select it. I'm gonna say midpoint right here. And then I'll select the object and hit enter. And then I'll go into my chair. I've got a couple of these. There we go. And I'll say edit paste. And then I can paste that in. And I'm gonna put it right over here like that. And then we can just use the array command polar array, select our object, hit enter, specify the center. And this is an O snap. As we go through and we start learning about AutoCAD, it will automatically gravitate to the endpoint or to the center, provided we hover over that geometry. And so as I look for the center here, what I'm gonna do is hover, there it is, it's acquired it it wants you to tag the actual geometry. And so I'll click right here and there we go. And then we just need the number of chairs. It's probably, if 
five. Nope. Four. No, I'm sure it's not four. Well, let's just go at six. Six seems like a good number. Depends how many guests you have coming to the meeting, right? You can kind of look at it and you guys say, how many, how many people can we fit in the room at a table like that? This is very common, you know, for people who do space planning. If you're going to have a, a, a meeting where everybody's having lunch, how many chairs and how many tables do you have and how many people are going to be in there? A great example for facilities management because we do this all the time. And I have to go and reserve a room and then I have to put in the um, the chairs and table locations because they're just big conference rooms that are empty. So we have to do a layout, tell them where to put things. All right, back to our main splash page. So your assignment this week is in module two or chapter two here. And as we look at this exercise, we have a mechanical and an architectural lab. The exercise is from the textbook. Since we're using the digital textbook now, um, some of them are good, some of them are so-so. Think of your math class at the end of the chapter, you have all these math problems. You don't have to do all of them. And it's sort of the same way. Since we've gone with the publisher in a digital textbook, what they've done is they've included all that information. Their bonus, if you do want to go through and, and work with them, they do have some nice information like how to develop a template or how to recover a damaged file. So there's good content in here. We also link to the Oakton CAD website and Al and I developed this years ago. And there's just some really good information on YouTube and other things like that. And we've migrated away from our Oakton CAD website. We still like it. You can see here's the drafting tables. Al and I used to run the drafting competitions in Illinois for Illinois Drafting Educators Association. But we're going more towards D2L. D2L is the lead in this um, play, but we still like to link to the content. And so things like how to use absolute coordinates, YouTube always seems to make me watch a video. I've been doing a lot of research on uh, laser cutters. And so here's one of the laser cutters. Oh, I like that camera that she made. But these are good. They're short videos, two minutes, how to use absolute coordinate methods. And you can kind of go through them and you can kind of see how they use this coordinate system to input the coordinates here, two comma two, six comma two, the X coordinate. So two comma two would be two, X coordinate, Y coordinate two. Second coordinate would be six comma two, X coordinate six, Y coordinate two. So videos are the way to go when you're learning CAD. Um, textbook is great for referencing, and we use the Open CAD website for that. So back to our content. Students should complete the architectural and the mechanical lab. Here's the architectural lab. There's a YouTube tutorial on how to complete that lab. There's a title block that you should be using for that. And like I was talking about before, there is a chair that you can insert into the drawing. And then also, do do we have them doing both, Al, or just one? Uh, they have a chance. They have the chance of doing both. The second one is a bonus, so they can do that. They're required to do one, right? Pardon me. So you want to require them to do one. They can choose either architectural or mechanical. That is correct. And they have they to do number one. On, they have to do number one for sure. Correct. And so there is a general design project, which is the number one. And then there is a uh, architectural or mechanical, and you can choose it. And we have a lot of content here. So you, you can do more than just one. And we encourage you to do more. Um, so as you go through and you look at these, these can be 3D printed, or we use these in our CAD CAM area to actually make those. And so CAD is a really good launching pad to go into other fields like manufacturing, engineering, industrial design, architecture, interior design. All right, so back to the main splash page. You may be saying, well, where's the number one information? Al has it right here, right? The front page, as you go down, there it is. It's on a PDF and there's a video goes along with it. So if you click on a PDF, please. There it is. 
and a PDF stack and finishes the whole drawing for you. You want to three ways of looking at it. That's right. You can either input the coordinates with the absolute relative rectangular or relative polar. Nobody really uses this one in the middle. Um, we will use the ones on the ends. And there are other ways to do it or to input your coordinates, but we want you to go from the base point to understand that CAD is a vector-based program, meaning it works by the numbers. And that's why we can drive these mechanical devices like 3D printers, laser cutters, and CNC machines with them. And here's the video. There's the video go along with it. And so the video will walk you through. There it is. How to input your coordinates. Let's talk about assignments and due dates, Al. Sounds fantastic. Once you complete the exercise, you want to save it. And so you go file, save as. I'm just going to throw it on my desktop. Save it with your initials. And then turn it into the assignments folder. You want to walk me through it, Al? Sure. You go to D2L, please. Go up on top. You will see all the way on top. It will say assignments. Third one in. Third tab. Left click on it, please. And it's got to be on uh, mod two or chapter two, either way you want to look at it. Yeah, go down to chapter two, left click on it. And it hopefully should come up there is uh, that is our grading format that we have that we use more money used on it. Uh, if for some reason we're not, we don't have something on there that's on that drawing, we give you credit for it, but we will merge into it later on. So you go all the way down. So you will be graded on completeness, and graphical accuracy, use of proper design rules. And so when we look at the learning objectives, that's sort of what we're looking at when we go into the chapter. Do you understand the absolute or relative polar coordinates? And then proper dimensioning and proper use of CAD features are using the correct layers and line types and just general drafting terminology. And it gives a total over, over, overview score and then it's submit assignments. So what you want to do in the bottom left corner there is says add a file, left click into it. And by the way, this is a two-way street, two-way hand, handshake of the use of grading and also if you want some help on it. First thing you do is do is click on my computer, upload. Now you can be looking forward at drawing. If he sees the drawing, he knows it's on his desktop. To look for the drawing name, the first initial, last initial, the drawing name of it, maybe the date into it, depending on how you save it. He says click and click open. It comes up and when it turns, instead of green, it turns a blue color. It has it right there. You say add. And it shows it right there. Now, there it is. There's comments. For some reason, I have a problem. And you say, hi, guys. Can you do me a favor? Look this over before you grade it. Or it's done, it's completed, ready to go, create it, or give a comment. Hey, I goofed up here, I'm not too sure, whatever else. So this way we have it back and forth, a good handshake. It's another way of looking at it. We use another, another trick and crazy, another tool. That's right. Since we're not in the classroom, this is our, our way of communicating and to be able to exchange files. And uh, then what you want to do is hit submit and automatically it will submit. Uh, we can't really submit them right now. Uh, it comes up and moves up on it, but it's there. Since I'm logged in as a student, it does work. And so yeah. once you submit it, um, you will get a confirmation that says that you sent it. And then you'll get a notice or an alert that says um, uh, that, well, I thought you did. I think you would get an announcement. They do. They do. You don't do it. You don't do it. So they get it. You don't do it. Right. I think it'll come through now that I have done, but it could be wrong. You know, my, my technology constantly changes and glitches, but there's, a, there's, your, mail. there's your mail, Joe. You're into the message right there. There you there. go. It's in the mail. Thanks. Yeah. I appreciate that.
And okay. now if you go down a little further, Joe, please. Uh, like I said, there's videos all the way through there. Keep on going. Uh, if you stop right there, uh, that's uh, Mod 2 Part B. That's the second one of our lectures. Uh, those are also on our drawing. So if you see the purple one, uh, there's a video to go along with it. So if you click on the video, link right there. And that goes over at what is going to happen, etc. That's from last semester, but works fantastic. Explains what it is. Go down to the next one, please. Chapter four, and it goes over what it's supposed to be, what it does, and there it is. There's number one right there. Shows you step by step, inch by inch, how to do it. And here's the mechanical. Very good. Thanks for putting those links in there, Al. Uh, it's our pleasure to our students. Whatever so, we can help the students with, we do. So we have it pretty well set up as far as how the how the course is set. Um, not sure why sometimes the pages are displaying like this, Al. This is weird. I have to go back to my E2L shell because it pulled up the wrong core shell. So my technology has been glitching a lot. So it's pulling up the 20. It uh, depends on what, uh, if you're using uh, Adobe or using um, it's the browser. Yeah. Browser, yeah, whatever it is. Depends. All right. All right. If you click on it, one right on top, please, Joe, real quick. I don't know which one you're talking about. Going up, please. Right there, stop. This is recorded Zoom 2. It's going to be a little bit different, but it's our old Zoom of last semester. But it goes through the whole thing again, just as we're talking about now. Right. And so we kind of go through this weekly Zoom meeting quite a bit. So there's a lot of content uh, that's out there for you. And we'll go through that with you. And we do have a PowerPoint to go along with this. If you go on the uh, content real quick, Joe, please. It's about three quarters of the way down in uh, chapter two, please. Sure. Keep going down. There it is right there. Unfortunately, I did not convert this to a uh, PDF yet. So you have to PowerPoint it up. If you don't have PowerPoint, let me know. I will convert it to a PDF for you. I have two screens. It's, it's launching it on the second screen. So I'll give it a second here and I'll move it over. There it is. You can see it on the bottom already, Joe. Yeah. There it is. So if you have two screens or you want to minimize and split the screen, you can have this going at the same time or video going at the same time or PowerPoint going at the same time as you're drawing, put a headset on or uh, earpiece on or whatever the case be and you're good to go. Sounds good, Al. I think that's about it, Joe. Sounds great. So we're going to wrap up our Zoom meeting here. Remember to turn in the assignments to the assignment folder. Uh, the calendar of dates has been updated. So module one is due on March 3rd. Um, we made them available. I'm not sure why, um, but yeah. So module one is due next week. And then module two is due on March 10th. Submit those to the Dropbox. The information's here on the main splash page. And we put things on the main splash page just to kind of organize things. And then under contents, there's more detailed information. So you want to make sure that you don't just stay on the main splash page, but that you also look into the contents tab for information. If the you have any 
The contents are like meat and potatoes. The splash page is like the peas, the vegetables. Yeah, nobody eats the vegetables. I like the vegetables. I don't know. If you have any questions, you can always instant message us and we try to get back to you within the same day um, with any questions that you might have. With that, I'm going to start to wrap this meeting up and I'll post the meeting announcement in a recording uh, for students who didn't attend today. All right, Al, I'm going to end the meeting and open things up for questions. Any last words? Nope, have fun. Ask questions if you need to. Let us know. All righty, we'll see you online next week then.